Hi, I'm here at the temple in Independence. I come here occasionally during this time of primarily working remotely to simply come and think and, and pray about all the members and friends of the church throughout the world during this time of pandemic. As I sit here, I, I hear in my mind and heart the echoes of excited voices and beautiful singing from past experiences here in the temple. And like all of you, I certainly look forward to the time we will return to those kinds of, of gatherings and to have in-person fellowship with each other. While there are some hopeful indicators, it does appear that coping with the COVID-19 pandemic will continue for some time yet. Being careful, informed, wise, and patient will be our watchwords in the months ahead. Recently, I became aware of a new book that I think is relevant to coping spiritually and emotionally with our current circumstances. It's titled, The Healing Power of Human Connection in a Sometimes Lonely World by Vivek Murthy, MD, a former Surgeon General of the United States. It's a book about the importance of human connection, the hidden impact of loneliness on our health, and the social power of community, which especially grabbed my attention. Dr. Murthy wrote, this book, because of what he described as the rising physical and emotional toll of social disconnection that is increasing in the world. What he did not anticipate, he said, was the unprecedented test that our global community would face just as his book was going to press. And of course, he was talking about the COVID-19 pandemic and the need to socially distance ourselves to avoid major health risks. As Dr. Murthy stated, the public health imperative was, and I would insert is, clear to save lives, we had need to radically increase the space between us. But he goes on to explain, and I agree that the term social distancing is somewhat unfortunate. It seems to imply relational as well as physical separation. If we could not meet, how can we connect? If we could not share the same space, how could we help each other? If we could not touch, how could we love? The phrase being used to help guard our health seems to condemn us to loneliness, which, according to Dr. Murthy, also is a major threat to human well being. And of course, this predicament was intensified by growing polarization division and mistrust in society at large. Panic over the potential economic fallout drove some to ignore the official health mandates and even hoard emergency supplies. Resisting health mandates in some areas has prolonged needed separation. As Dr. Murthy described it, alongside the looming specter of global financial recession rose an equally disturbing prospect of what he termed a social recession. And I thought that was an interesting phrase, a social recession. 
a fraying of communal bonds that deepens in severity the longer we go without meaningful human interaction. Early on in the pandemic, in response to this kind of concern, world church leaders shifted from using the term social distancing to physical distancing in our communications. We need to maintain physical space and limit the number of interpersonal contacts beyond our immediate family to slow the spread of COVID-19. But at the same time, we know as disciples and members of Community of Christ, we are to continue to put our faith, our calling and our ingenuity into practice to promote, especially now, to promote communities of joy, hope, love, and peace. So what can we do to reach out to family, friends, and others to promote community and to avoid a relational recession that negatively impacts physical and emotional well-being? With that in mind, Dr. Murthy points out in his book how fortunate we are to have technology that provides opportunities to enhance our relationships while keeping physical distance as necessary. He advocates four basic strategies that will not only help us weather the current health crisis, but also will help heal our social world far into the future. While these strategies are not new, we're reminded of their importance as we continue to cope with COVID-19, its related impacts, and as we look to the future. And I'll share a brief summary of each one of those four strategies. One, spend time each day with those you love. This is not limited to people in your immediate household Reach out also to the other members of your lifeline via phone or better yet, video conference, so you can hear their voices and see their faces. He suggests devote at least 15 minutes each day to connecting with those you care about most. Number two, focus on each other. Try to eliminate distractions when interacting with others. Forget about multitasking and give the other person the gift of your full attention. Making eye contact, if possible, and genuinely listening to them. Number three, and this may sound a bit surprising, embrace solitude. The first step towards building stronger connection with others is to build a strong connection and sense of oneself. Solitude helps us to do that by allowing us to check in with our own feelings and, and thoughts, to explore our creativity and to connect with nature. Meditation, prayer, art, music, and time spent outdoors can be sources of comfort and joy. And then four, help and be helped. Service is a form of human connection that reminds us of our value, our purpose in life. Giving and receiving both strengthen our social bonds, our relationships, our sense of community. Checking in on a neighbor, seeking advice, even just offering a smile to a stranger six feet away, all can make us stronger. 
We must persevere in faith, hope, and wisdom as we adapt our lives to this time of pandemic. Please don't disregard recommended precautions to keep you, your family, and faith community and larger community safe and healthy. Also, let's continue to explore and create innovative ways to grow community in Christ and decrease relational distance as we maintain necessary physical distance using all the means available. How many people can you connect with, support, and serve daily? Each caring overture and contact will benefit others, yourself, Christ's mission, and tilt the world toward healing and a brighter future beyond this pandemic.